Hello YouTube, it's me again, Mike White with 143. So today we have a kind of complex subject. It's an advanced tutorial. We're going to do something on half toning. And I just have to issue a disclaimer. I've been doing half toning for about three months. I am not an expert. Uh, I've done a lot of it and I've worked really hard to, uh, you know, level up my knowledge about this subject. And I'm going to show you my current level of knowledge. Uh, what is it? It's November 2023. So let's get started. So here we have an image that is, you know, set up uh, and perfect for half toning. There's a lot of transparency and you can see all these areas where, you know, you can see through the image and see the uh, alpha grid behind. We're here in Photoshop and you can see this has just got a lot of areas that are going to need half toning. And then it's obviously got some that need to be hard. Um, and we have this word that we don't want to mess up or, or have any problems with. So we've got to, you know, make sure we half tone this, this design. And right now these are set up as layers, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. Um, it's, 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 it's actually best to keep it layered if you can, but what I'm getting from customers is, is not layered. You know, obviously it's just a PNG or, uh, you know, just a, a flat file. And so I'm going to work with this just like it's something that I would have got from a customer. Um, the best thing to do would be keep the parts that don't need half toning, like these words, separated on a separate layer. Uh, that's the best thing to do. But we're going to work with, with what I get all day long. So we're just going to go ahead and rasterize this type. And I'm just going to merge it down so that this is all one flat image. Uh, so the first thing you do is you want to pay attention to your image size. Uh, so I've already checked this image for quality. It looks good at 100%. And I've got it set to uh, you know 3,000 by 3,000, so suitable for printing at about 10 inches. And what I want to do is I just want to change this resolution. So I don't want resample on. I want to change this resolution to 300. Um, and typically, I'll tell you that the DPI doesn't matter. In this case, because there's math involved, and we're going to be scaling things up and then scaling them back down as part of the halftone process, we actually need to make sure that we're set to 300 resolution. And, you know, we also need to be close to whatever the print size you want. So you don't want to do this at 6,000 pixels, um, which would be 20 inches, if you're going to print it at 10 inches. You want to do this close to the print size resolution. So, I mean, exactly the print size resolution would be perfect, but I say close because 3,600, you know, that's that's a size that I use quite a lot. That's 12 inches. Um, there's not many people that want to print designs for t-shirts, you know, much bigger than 12 inches. Uh, so that's, that's a good size to go with. And if a customer was submitting an order and they had a 10 inch uh, design, I, I would probably go ahead and do it at 12 inches because it's close enough. And, and that way, you know, it would give the customer, um, you know, a little wiggle room if they needed to order something a little bigger next time. Okay, so we've got our settings set. And then the next step that's important is to save the image. So we're going to save this as, I'm going to call it Fire and Ice Resized. That's just my format. Uh, I know that that's one that I'm, I've got it sized for half toning and I'm about to perform my, my magic on it. And then let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do image uh, grayscale. So we're just converting it to grayscale. Then what we're going to do is image adjustments um, and we want to go after levels. So with this, we're just going to pop this black up just a couple notches here. We don't want any pure black, and we know we definitely have some in that in that black around the uh, the word half tone. But I've just I've just changed the levels to where there is no pure black in the image. And what that lets me do is that lets me go into adjustments, um, exposure, and turn the exposure all the way up and get pure white out of everything. Um, so everything, you know, I'm getting pure white out of everything and I'm just, it's just respecting the semi-transparency now. Um, uh, everything is 100% white. Um, and if I hadn't adjusted those levels, we might still see a black outline, uh, where our stroke was. Okay. So now we are halfway there. So now what we want to do is we want to add a, a color fill layer layer, and I'm just going to add a black solid black color fill. Okay, I'm going to pull that down below. And, and now you can start seeing what we're doing. We're building a mask. 
So this mask is, is what's going to ultimately be our, our halftone result. So uh, the next step, we're just gonna go to image, mode, bitmap. It's gonna ask us if we wanna flatten the layers, and yes, we do. And it's gonna ask us the resolution. And so I use 2000 pixels per inch, method, halftone screen. So you've got different methods, you just need to choose halftone screen and put 2000 pixels per inch. Okay. And then frequency, this is the most common ones. And you can adjust this. This makes a big impact, actually. Sometimes I use 30 or 40 here. It just depends on the design, and it depends on the final result and how fine we want the effect to be. But for the <coughs> most part, like an image like this where the whole thing is getting half-toned, you know, 20, 45 round, that's what I've used the most. Okay, so it's actually already done the work. And now all we have to do is we need to go to image size. And we actually want resample check now because it's blown this up to 20,000. So we're just going to change that resolution back to 300 and we should get back to our 3000. And we're just going to hit OK. And now we have our mask. And so we're just going to hit Control A and I'm selecting everything. So I'm going to hit Control 0 actually or Control 1 to, to zoom out here. So let's just go back to this Control 0 so you can see what's happening. Control A and control C. So now I have got this mask on my clipboard, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do is just revert the image. So I'm gonna hit F12. You can also go up here, um, oh gosh, where is it? File revert, so F12, and it'll revert to that saved copy of the image that we had just a second ago. Okay, so now we're just going to turn on our layer mask, and then we're gonna hit Alt, hold Alt, and click the mask. And that has like selected the mask. And then we're literally just going to paste what's on our clipboard. And voila, we have half tone this image. So let's take a look at the results. So we've got, you know, perfection around these letters. There's a little bit of wiggle that might not have been there to begin with, but it's pretty good. And then everywhere where we've got transparency, we've got these dots. And so, um, they're, they're, they're all behind all of these different layers, okay? But we actually still have our semi-transparency in these dots. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's still areas where you can see through. And yeah, you can definitely see that. You can see right through these areas. So we have our dots, but we don't have hard pixels yet. And that's the goal. We want to get to completely hard pixels. So I'm actually just going to revert this image once again. I'm going to hit F12, and that should revert us back. So here we are. And I'm going to make stacks. So I actually have a command that does this. Um, I call this stacking them up. And, you know, I'm just stacking up multiple layers. And you can see what's happening. It's actually bringing the true color. And eventually, um, you know, if I stack this enough times, I'm going to get, um, you know, the true color. So now I'm just going to merge visible and then continue to do that. So that kind of multiplies your efforts. Now each one of these stacks is even more um, opaque than, than they were before. So you just, you know, again, just merge visible and just keep going. You know, I usually recommend 15 to 20 stacks. You can see um, things are still happening. Uh, you know, we're starting to get in this, this white out here. So you can just go with this forever. And that's one of the reasons why I have my action stored. So I have this five layer stack and all it does is make four duplicate layers and then merge visible. So I can just literally select this and hit play on it. Oh, it's not letting me. Maybe I need to select the layer. Hit play on it and it'll just keep going. And you get all these really weird artifacts. It's, it's, it's actually quite interesting. You find out, you know, that all this stuff was back behind an image. You know, that was always there. Um, it's not been created by this process. It was always there. It was in the in the alpha transparency. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep playing this until I see no more change. And so now, you know, at this point, every time I click that play button, it made five stacks, merged them down, and then five more stacks of that. So the multiplication that was happening there was, was intense. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got hundreds of stacks at this point uh, with all those clicks of the play button. So um, this is now solid. All right. 
and this is what we want to mask. So we're just going to go ahead and turn our mask on, hit Alt, and pray that that's still on our clipboard. And it is. And this is our final result. So, um, you know, this is what I mean when I say I'd rather, you know, I'd rather the artists that are creating these files do this because, you know, there's parts of it that you might not want. Like you might want to clean this mess up out here. You know, you might want to go in and get rid of some of those black dots uh, because they're just not really adding anything to the to the situation for you. I mean, there's there's definitely improvement that could be done. It would be better to have kept this layer, uh, the, the half-toning words, out of the mix and it wouldn't have got this hard edge. And there's other things that I could have done. You know, this I'm talking about this little chopped up edge, you know, this choppy part. Um, and there's other things that I could have done to protect it from that. Um, and I did probably didn't need to make as many stacks as I could, as I did. And there's other things that you can do, like, you know, going and setting a layer mask and then going into your image adjustments and doing uh, a threshold uh, to where it'll actually, like, restrict how much is transparent. And you can adjust your levels. I mean, there's so much you can do. But when you're given an image that's already, you know, it needs this and you're in a position like mine, you just kind of have to go with the defaults. Um, and it's much better to get, uh, you know, the actual artist that has the original artwork and, and knows what they're going for, you know. Um, and so at this point, what you can do is you can you know, put some layers behind it. So let's just drop some black color back here and see how it looks on black. And then let's see how it looks on white. And those are the two that you need to check. So um, this is what you're tuning for. And hopefully that's just showing you how to do it. Hey, as always, thanks for buying your transfers from 143vinyl.com. And thanks for watching my videos. Take care.